underway here. So, welcome back. Ben my name is Darwin, coming to you live on twitch.tv slash DarwinCast, as Five always, as well as in-game via the Dota 2 TV client. Reserve this is the time. 80-2L Season 10 Week 5 matchup between Plasma Nation and Reborn <sighs> Domination Z or RD Radiant Team Ben. Plasma Nation taking the first game in this best of two series off the back of another pretty early pushing oriented lineup. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining. Uh, sorry, la laughing at some of the Twitch Five chat here. Seconds but uh, remaining. No, they, they had a relatively early pushing lineup. They once again picked up the Chen. Reserve you can see Reborn dying. Domination Z banning out the Lone Druid knowing that it's a current push favorite of Plasma, and opting Dire to go Dean with ban. the Witch Doctor ban out as their second overall pick. So, throwing some respect bans over the way of Duralius as uh, he was able to secure some very significant Cask and Death Ward ultimates. Um, the most notable, I think, was probably at the Roche Pit, where it allowed them to completely wipe uh, RDZ take Roche, and then push up the bottom lane, and, and from there was a nearly an unwinnable battle for, for RDCs. They had already lost one of the racks top. So. Ten seconds remaining. Shuttle Shaman. Dire team pick. So as uh, Plasma Nation goes through its bands, it's focusing on the same bands as before, getting rid of the OD, getting rid of the Lycan. So nothing, not changing things up too much on their side of the map here. Reborn Domination, picking up the Shadow Shaman, so Ten they're going to start things off remaining. with some decent push potential of their own. Five seconds I'm remaining. curious to see how they respond to the possibility of Beastmaster being out there Dire and Plasma Nation pick. once again picking up the Chen so it's one of those if it's not broke don't fix it strategies we've seen APC playing the the Chen quite a bit here recently and playing it successfully so Ten seconds remaining. Five Amy putting on a remaining. very solid laning performance with the Beastmaster going into the Invoker. And instead, this time, it's Radiant Plasma Nation Dean opting pick. to pick up the Gyrocopter. And Radiant RDZ not wasting an, a moment. Already, already hovering over the hero, most likely opt to pick up the Ancient Apparition, so. Ten Not a bad uh, support pickup because of that heal coming out from Chen is going to be completely remaining. negated by the Ice Blast of AA. So, I like that pickup. It's also going to be a deterrent to Plasma Nation picking up something like a Dazzle which will be able to also help heal up some of the Chen creeps. It obviously doesn't exclude it in its entirety. They can still go for it. But it does... It does make it an uphill battle for, for someone Dire like Dazzle. Team ban. Radiant Team Ban. Sven being the third ban by Plasma Nation as RDZ head back to Ten their previous ban order, uh, which included a ban out of the Viper. Five seconds remaining. Neither team really revealing their mids yet. Reserve so, time. Unless that's going to be a gyrocopter mid. But most of the cores still remain in pretty silent here, as RTZ are actually eating into some of their reserve time here 
for the sake of a ban, and I expect this to be a uh, a strategic move where they're discussing not only what hero to ban next, but what hero do they want to pick in their Dire next team ban. pick order. And they decided to ban out the Beastmaster, so knowing how Dire dangerous Amy was with them in that middle lane, they throw another respect ban out there. Radiant team pick. Picking up the Clockwork Plasmination is uh, probably going to be playing that in the off lane here. I don't know that I've seen ten seconds remaining. Magmain play uh, an off lane Clockwork. Dire team big. RDZ deci deciding that first game was a fluke and they'll be Fuck. able to come back strong with Radiant an Invoker in that big. mid lane. Now that Beastmaster is gone, Plasmination responding immediately with a puck pickup of their own. Puck, one of my favorite heroes, and a hero I've been playing quite a bit here recently. I think it the most likely not the strongest hero against an invoker. Uh, he, he can certainly stand his Ten ground though, and remaining. the phase shift allows him to dodge some of those painful Five exhort hits at the remaining. beginning. And if you time it right, you can dodge the tornado EMP combo. Reserve time. Uh, and everything else. You can orb out of the way of meatballs. There's Puck's an elusive creature on the battlefield, so he definitely has some tools to to run around various heroes like Invoker, which are very position centric. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds Earth remaining. Shaker. Dire team ban. <laughs> RDZ picking up an Earthshaker. As Moobot's running some raffles over in Twitch chat for the time being. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And that is one thing that Plasma Nation doesn't have a ton of right now they Resume have the clockwork time. who's going to have his battery assault his cogs and, and his hookshot uh, and the pucks dream coil but but none of those are really true stuns we've seen Chen running around with centaur creeps quite a bit so that'll probably be a supplemental Ten stun once remaining. again here in this lineup Oh, I forgot. Five of course, seconds remaining. Too. Assuming that. Dire team big. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be Kupo playing the gyro. Assuming Kupo levels up homing missile. Final picks coming out. You have the Lena ban from Reborn Domination Z, recognizing that they need. Ten a support seconds player. Remaining. Five seconds remaining. And Plasma Nation banning out one of those top tier hard carries Reserve and getting time. rid of the Juggernaut. Hopefully forcing RDC into a hero that they're either less familiar with, less comfortable with, or a little bit trickier to execute. Right now, since they are looking at essentially a hard support to their fifth pro, they do have a ton of options to choose from, and they go with the Pugna. So, another one of those heroes that, like Chen, can transition into a very painful support to have to deal with. We saw Dorelius's, uh Witch Doctor in, in Game 1 played pretty aggressively to the point where he, he did get caught out a couple times a little bit too far in enemy behind enemy lines 
but by doing so he was in constant position to make big team plays as well. RDZ knowing who's going to be playing what and they all jump on it pretty quickly. Uh, but over on Plasma Nation they're thinking about it a bit more as Amy picks up the puck so we'll likely see him going up against the Invoker once again mid. The rest of the heroes thinking about it. Possibly strategizing over the game plan for the match. And I like the Pugna pick with the Clockwork because he's going to be able to uh, life drain Ten seconds as remaining. Clockwork hooks into someone and cogs them in place. Five seconds so it's remaining. going to prevent that real hard escape. Alright, heroes are desperate for when fighting a Pugna. Magmin letting out his second Baka! As we start off game two with a pause. Good, I still have uh, control of the map. So, going through introductions, once again starting with Plasma Nation, as there has been a disconnect on RDZ. You can see the upside down gyrocopter there. That's not upside down. What? He just looks upside down. Am I losing my mind? I think I'm losing my mind. That's right side up. So you have the Kupo playing the gyrocopter, throwing his hook into the air here on the clockwork. You have Magmin and his Wario mustache. On your middle lane here, you're going to have Amy playing Puck. That was a terrible Puck impersonation. Playing Puck. Oh, I can't do it. I give up. I have too much beer in my system to try to uh, hit the high notes of Puck. Who, fun fact, the uh, voice actor for Puck also does Wind Ranger, I believe Queen of Pain, PA... Lena, Crystal Maiden, uh, I forget who else, but the voice actors for a lot of these heroes play the voices of multiple different uh, heroes. Much obliged. Uh, once again, playing the Chen, you're going to have ABC, ABC, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and last but not least, kind of hiding out here, since he's so short, you have Derelius playing the Pugna the other side of the map here heading back to his middle lane for a redemption game and a redemption lane you have run playing the invoker phoenix playing the earth shaker which will hopefully be a little less confusing here in game two as there's no actual phoenix in the game you have ratman playing the shadow shaman Coming in behind him, you have Chazel Dazzle playing the Ancient Apparition. And before we get into any more introductions, you're going to have a clash here as Plasma Nation are going to spot out and run into the Invoker. And they hit him with an orb and a cog, and that's going to be all she wrote. This Gyrocopter did have a rocket barrage raining down there and securing him the first blood. So this bottom room is going to be pretty well secured. So. Run having a difficult go of things in game one is going to start off game two uh, with a death to his name already. Definitely not what he wanted to uh, start the with here in begins. game two as he tries to recover. Yeah, hey, have fun playing the Slark, and I think that about does it. And Plasma Nation securing both runes for themselves as Puck is able to get the first and Gyrocopter able to get the second. A nice aggressive ward coming out from Derelius here for the mid matchup between Amy and Run. Invoker starting things off with a cold snap. Let's go around. We'll see if he opts to go with any sort of different invoker build or if he 
kind of sticks to his guns in game one. Empty Aurelius once again doing his best to zone out the offlaner here, the Phoenix Earthshaker. Meanwhile, in the bot lane here, I caught just the tail end of it as the defensive tri lane from RDZ secured their first kill of the match against the clockwork played by Magni. And that kill went the way of Shadow Shaman. So you definitely want that extra gold on your Slark so he can snowball out of control early on. But you'll take a kill where you can get a kill. There is a sentry ward down, which spots out this observer ward, but it hasn't been uh, de warded quite yet. As the supports have smoked up, and it looks like they're going to be heading into the dire jungle. Eager to lock down ABC early, but nope, I take that back. Instead, they're looking to make a go on Puck, who gets a cold snap, but as soon as those that smoke is popped, he throws out an orb, heads back to the safety of his tower, and meets the aggression with some harassment of his own, throwing some right clicks onto the Shadow Shaman there. An article of faith. And now at level two, you have Chen rotating in. He's kidnapped himself a Dark Troll Double Summoner. Damage. So he's going to have that Raise the Dead ability, which he pops there. Getting a few more creeps as well as a net if needed for any sort of ganking. He is going to uh, run into a Slark in the dire jungle here. As he backs up, the RDZ squad turn their focus onto Magmin, so successfully able to distract him for a while, Magmin throws out the cogs with his last remainder of, of health, and that forces the Slark, which, not Witch Doctor, the Slark to Shadow Shaman, back out of harm's way. Not sure if ABC was looking to intentionally stack these creeps uh, by kidnapping the satyr there, but he he actually does so, and there's a wild wing gripper sitting there for him if he does want to pick that one up as well. Slark constantly pulling this uh, creep wave into the lane, hopeful to drag the creep equilibrium back to his tower. Well, Ratman walks up and he gets a clarity potion knocked off of him by the creep wave. And now ABC's moving his army into position to kind of zone out these supports and make sure that this creep wave finishes off the. or the, the neutrals finish off the dire creep wave. Plenty of stacks being built up over here in the neutral camp on the radiant side of the map as well. And as soon as I look away from this bottom lane, I tried to give some love to the other lanes, and there's just violence that ensues as ABC is almost finished off here by the Slark, but it's the Clockwork who winds up killing the AA, and I didn't see how the Shaman died. It was uh, the Chen and his creeps that were able to finish off that kill. So I was expecting some aggression down here for a while, just didn't see it, and eventually it does uh, Radiance break out tower as soon as I look attack. away. Well, taking a look at this mid lane here, you have Puck sitting on 27 last hits versus the Invoker's 12, and part of that is probably due to the fact that he's not able to exhort so he doesn't have that really strong right clicks up and you can see Puck there just denying creep after creep he has more denies than Invoker has last hits at this point and he's able to secure two more last hits for himself with that orb meanwhile in the bottom lane Magmin may be in some trouble here as Fun is chasing him down as Shadow Shaman and AA look to 
provide Radiance that lockdown under attack. I look away from the mid lane and Amy Mission secures control. himself a kill against the invoker. So missing fights left and right here. Mission and pretty control. much everyone on Plasma Nation has a kill to their name at this point. Except for Duralius, their their hard support position. But the day's not over. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. more concerned with stacking. Stacks win games, not hero kills. Missing. The Chen Creeps doing some significant damage to AA here as uh, Clockwork tries to chase him down. He's going to be body blocked by the Shadow Shaman. And so he opts to just go ahead and kill that Shaman instead by cogsing him in place. And the Satyr gets another Shockwave off, which actually kills the Slark. And the Shadow Shaman is Clockwork fires off a uh, rocket dropping the AA. Radiance Middle and Tower is Gyrocopter under gets a pick off against the Earthshaker, who I think Radiance must have been. Bottom Tower is under attack. Says he died right here. So he must have been just looking to back up, and the Gyrocopter able to dive after him and get a kill. I'm long. Meanwhile, in the middle here, you had a rotation from Invoker and Shadow Shaman back into their lane, and they get immediately dropped by Puck and Clockwork. So, the lethal drop attack. potential from Plasma Nation is immediate. You get back to a lane, and lo and behold, there's a Clockwork sitting in the shadows, slightly off screen, and between him and the Puck, they have the damage to bring you down. And they also Radiance have the damage to bring down the fallen. first tower of the game. As ABC rotates into Radiance the dire jungle down here with his attack. army of creeps, but does eventually sick them onto the tower, so this should be the second tower. Relatively easy. You have Rat coming out, shackling down fallen. the clockwork, and he's just going to be left to die as ABC goes, You know what? See ya. I'm out. Or I, you know what? I take that back. I missed it. He actually got test of faith back to the fountain. So ABC was not saying see ya. He was saying I got you. So sent back to the fountain and he gets back safely. Phoenix getting hit by a dream quill here. He's gonna look to make his escape, but an orb and a rocket barrage and I think I saw Radiant the uh, Nether Blast coming attack. out from Duralius there, definitely the Decrep is going to be enough to Radiant drop the Earthshaker and buy the space spoken. they need to push down the lane here. Gyrocopter doing slight victory Dyer's barrel roll there after the attack. Tier 1 tower falls. Run getting shackled in place by some of the creeps is Radiant going to be able to dodge the shockwave blast as well as the killing blow from the puck as he ghost walks himself out to safety and on the bottom lane clockwork is going up two against one trying to beat down the slark and the aa he's able to get one of the two but fun walks away with just a sliver of health and back to base as there is no uh no Zeus in the game and Invoker's not playing on your side at the moment, so you're not gonna be able to follow it up with a Sun Strike. You actually really don't have any global presence from Plasma Nation unless the Gyrocopter opts to go for an Ags, which would be a very odd build for him these days. Um, RDZ on the other hand have have a few different things that they can utilize. Grouping up at the 10 minute mark here, Plasma Nation looking to continue to apply pressure early and often as they rotate all five heroes to the top lane, looking Radiance to zone out anyone from RDZ and Magmin actually hooking in and catching Ratman deep behind the tier 2 tower. He is going to need a fissure from the Earthshaker and some right click damage from the Invoker, but it's not going to be enough as Koopa walks forward and drops the ceiling on him via that call down. 
Gets a double kill for himself and protects his clockwork in the process. Duralius dropping a just a level one nether ward on the high ground for now. Puck has completed his blink dagger, so as the fissure animation is being thrown out by the Earthshaker, Puck blinks in, hits him with silence a little bit uh, too late to prevent the fissure, but as the rest of the RDZ lineup descend on the Puck, he's able to orb, phase shift, and jaunt his way to safety, especially with that fissure wall being in place, he was able to get on get from the dangerous side to the safe side of it. Taking a look at vision, you can see once again this aggressive vision coming out from Plasma Nation, and it almost Radiant matches the vision that uh, RDZ have. They both kind of have that same Dyer's bottom tower vision is under line, attack. which is right around the Radiant tier two. One of these days, I'll, I'll uh, be able to observe a kill Dyer's by this clockwork as he's able attack. to pick off an Earthshaker this time. Rock it on. Don't think that's going to see it. Yep, it's slightly off the mark there. So some good defensive wards coming out from RDC are going to spot the rotation of Plasma Nation here as they look to get in position and, and push down this tier 2 tower. But even knowing where they're at, I don't think Plasma Nation's too worried about hiding their location. Radiance middle tower is they're, under attack. they're making it known that they're going to hang out on the Radiant side of the map. And for now, it's uh, just Puck kind of right-clicking down this tower with some of the Skeleton Warrior creeps and illusions protecting the flank and tanking the actual tower. You have the Nether Ward chilling in the trees here from Duralius, preventing any possible uh, flanking maneuvers. And Puck is securing the fallen. last hit of the tower there for himself with that Nether Blast. I didn't see uh, what Puck was trying to land there with his Dream Coil. But now Madmean's going to be caught on the safe side of a Fissure Wall. So Phoenix possibly buying him space there. He was kind of locked down by the Shadow Shaman as he had him shackled. But the Fissure also initiating there and being slightly off the mark. Radiance bottom tower Furthermore, is there was no, no damage there to, to apply once the lockdown was in position here. And so now it's this creep Radiance army. The big meat wagons fallen. up front, the centaurs, and a small army of skeleton warriors. As uh, the dark troll summoners are ready to Dyer's top tower is under net down attack. any heroes that get too close. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Taking a look at the net worth charts here, you can see out of the top five positions, four Dyer's of them tower is are Plasma attack. Nation heroes, and here we might be able to catch one of these elusive Magmine pickoffs as he's able to hook shot into the Invoker, pop his blade mail. He does eat a tornado EM I think he ate an EMP. But unfortunately, he doesn't actually get the kill, as the kill is denied to him by the ancient creeps there. And so Magmin just taking out his aggression on the creeps and slaughtering them shortly after the fact. Meanwhile, the top lane, Puck picking off a Slark there, he had the face room that he had activated, as well as a newly built Dagon on the back of the Aegis of the Immortal. Hadn't noticed this over here, but it looks like a four stack? I think it's two golems, 
the black dragons and the rumble hides. So I think that uh, I think that was a four stack. So gonna be a huge infusion of gold going into the pocket of Gyrocopter here as he stands on the high ground. Just kind of mows this down. While the rest of his team, for now, put up a dangerous front and look to possibly push into the high ground even without their Gyrocopter. And just kind of a 4 vs 5 uphill push. But right now I think it must be for show as Puck is back, Gyro's back, so it's just Chen, Clock, and Pugna hanging out up front. And as Invoker tosses out a Tornado EMP, he's going to do a lot of damage with the Nether Ward, as does Fun, as he's Shadow Dance thin. He is going to get the pick off against the Pugna. Magmi now shackled inside of his Cog. Phoenix hitting him with a big Echo Slam, boosted by some of those additional Chen creeps. And it's going to be a two for nothing pick off as Plasma Nation were kind of putting up a Dyer's front bottom tower is under attack. bolstering a bit as they did not have the gyrocopter or the puck but I as soon as they push outside of their base much further than that the cores arrive and you can see puck getting an answer kill there against the invoker so once again right around the 20 at the 17 minute mark actually uh, Plasma Nation already sitting on a 20k net worth lead. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. And this time with a core in position, they're going to look to make a go onto this tower. Puck doing a little dance as he blinks forward, orbs through the Shadow Shaman, and then hits him with a Dagon on his way out. He tosses out a Dream Coil onto the Slark. It's going to connect, but where does Wicked Puck get off to? Oh, he gets sent back to base by the Chen once again. So Chen protecting his allies time and time again. Meanwhile, it's Chen who gets the last hit against the Slark. After uh, Slark got a kill on the Pugna, so able to save the puck I thought puck might have popped there to the ice blast from ancient apparition but Radiance it must have been just a few attack. HP shy Radiance of that break mechanic and so he gets sent back to the fountain and healed up while invoker relatively low Radiance HP is going to try to go on to gyrocopter here and puck having made his way back to the fight blinks forward and lands a Dagon burst onto the invoker as well as an orb through the Shadow Shaman. It's going to be Clockwork who's awarded with that kill. But it looked like uh, Puck doing a good deal of the damage there. And he blinks forward once again, constantly playing the aggressor here. Radiance bottom tower is keeping under that attack. Earthshaker at bay. So Plasma Nation kind of slow sieging this one compared to some of their previous fights. That time connecting with the combo, Puck lands the Blink Waning Rift Orb into uh, the Dagon. He is beyond godlike as he gets a double kill there. The Aegis is eventually popped as he finishes off the Invoker as well. Not sure who he wants to chase at this point, kind of eyeballing the Shaman, eyeballing the Slark Radiant's as he rotated back to base, and opts to play Radiant's objective Middle Dota with his, his allies here. Back. He gets the Blink Waning Rift or Dagon combination onto the Shadow Shaman who once again falls, sitting outside of the Clockwork Cogs. The entire Plasma Nation lineup is all grouped up, and so Earthshaker seizes on the opportunity, lands a big Echo Slam, getting the kill onto Puck, which by itself was worth 1,700 gold. So he sacrificed himself in the process, but definitely well worth it. AA Blast is going to be a little bit short here as Fun is forcing the retreat from Plasma Nation. As he chases down the Pugna, he chases down the ABC, but getting to craft is going to slow him down enough that he's not going to be able to do much. Meanwhile, he turns his focus on to Koopa, who's 
willing to fight, and he turns into him with a rocket barrage going. Slark did have to buy back, so he was at risk of a possible die back there, but now that he's gotten back to high ground out of vision, the Shadow Dance buff is going to be in effect, and he'll heal back up. Meanwhile, Koopo making good use of this lull in the action, heads back to the Ancients, farms those up. So, not the best defense from RDZ. They did lose a set of racks there, but they were able to get some kills in response. And they've slowed the bleeding a little yeah, bit. They're up. still losing gold uh, minute by minute here, but it hasn't gotten much worse than it has been throughout the rest of the game. You can see for a brief moment there, Pugna was above the Slark in terms of net worth, but beyond that, it's still those top four on the side of Plasma Nation. Magni taking up position here in the front ground is going to be dove on by RDZ, but Amy on the puck is going to be in position to make them pay for, for leaving their base, and RDZ are able to get the kill against the clockwork, but Puck coming in behind the scenes, landing the orb, the dream coils, the waning rifts, and securing some last hits with uh, that level 4, now level 5 Dagon. It's going to buy them the time and space they need to push uphill. This is likely going to be GG as the second set of racks falls and Radiance nobody on the side of RDC is currently fallen. buying back, Radiance you can Bolton see here. Have uh, they have it on the two supports, the AA and the Shaman. Uh, but for now, they're still looking to fight as two sets of racks are down. The remainder of Plasma Nation look to reset here in the top lane. Chen zoning out RDZ with those centaurs and uh, troll summoners. Top tier 3 tower sitting at just 300 health. Looking across the board for Plasma Nation. Uh, you have the top tier 1 at about half health. Everything else sitting pretty healthy. So they haven't even lost much tier 1 tower damage yet. So if RDZ are going to be able to manage a comeback at this point in the game. Which odds are definitely, definitely slim. As you can see, Puck is able to just rotate around and get kills at will. Gyrocopter picking off the Shadow Shaman who does buy back. Invoker does not have it, so he's going to be out of the game here. Clockwork cooking in to the Earthshaker who's four staffed out of the cogs, at least for the time being. Slark trying to get a kill here onto the back line. Chen, and he's going to have to leap to the high ground and try to teleport back to base behind enemy lines. But the clockwork's not going to be having that. He hooks forward, catches him outside of his base, and makes him pay. So, you have GG called by RDZ along with some good sportsmanship. RDZ, um, Letting Plasma Nation know that they're rooting for them in the overall 82L bracket here. As I mentioned before, Plasma Nation coming into this best of two series, having won seven of their past eight games in 82L. Uh, they're going to add two more wins to their belt here. <laughs> Magmean bacawing around. Or no, that was Amy bacawing. And RDZ not letting the uh, the puck bacaw since since he wasn't playing Phoenix today. So good sportsmanship all around. Well played both teams. RDZ uh, putting up a valiant defense. You saw them kind of hold their ground fairly successfully there in the mid lane, less so in the bottom lane. And from there it was pretty much GG as uh, Plasma Nation just had to reset and take those last racks in the top lane so once again congratulations to plasma nation taking this best of two series 2-0 that puts them overall at nine and one and definitely in the lead of their bracket and sitting pretty comfortable in 
playoff potential here for 82L Season 10. If you like my cast, as always, please hit that follow, subscribe, share button down below. Uh, as always, my videos will be posted up to YouTube after tonight's match. If you want to catch the recaps once again for yourselves or share them with friends. I am Darman, coming to you live on twitch.tv slash DarmanCast. It's been a pleasure. Next week, I'm going to... I'm not going to have any casts, as I am going to be out traveling for work. So apologies up front if you're going to be tuning into the channel, or if you had hoped to tune into the channel next week, as I will not be here. But there's plenty of other amateur casters out there for 82L. Hit them up. Uh, I'll give a shout out to one of my favorites right now, which is Nefarious. I think he's a really strong up-and-coming caster who's been doing this for about two to three months now, so he's relatively new but seems pretty sharp. So check out his channel next week. Give him some love. And until I see you guys, which will probably be in about uh, 10, 15 days, uh, good fun. Have luck out there. Bye.